All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about building a center ring for this. Part of the reason for doing a double center ring like this is because I used the cheaper glue to put the center ring together in the first place. And I didn't use glue on the rafters either because I'm going to be taking apart this greenhouse and uh, moving it to another location later. And uh, what happens is, if you grab this in here, you'll notice the gap in here opens up a little bit as you pull. So that means the rafters are not as strong. So if you double up the rafter ring, it gives it a little bit of extra strength. Plus, if you're climbing up here to uh, build a roof hatch or open it up or service anything on the top of the greenhouse, you can use a ladder and come up through the middle and use this like a, a handrail. This center ring is built just a little bit smaller than the outside one. The outside one is 24 inches from tip to tip. This center ring is 20 and a half inches from tip to tip. Same 30 degree angle as the outer one. These small spacer blocks are between inch and a half and inch and three quarters long, uh, depending on how twisted your wood is that you assemble this with. So you're gonna have to customize that a little bit and uh, then you just set the blocks up here and tap them in with a hammer or tap them in with a, a scrap piece of wood knock them down in there slide them over to where they need to go which I kind of put them inside of the main rafters and just go ahead and screw them on and that'll give extra rigidity to the corners there's a few other ways to do this too but I just wanted to do this because it was pretty simple now I'm going to build a very simple roof hatch to go over this. Cut six 24 inch pieces, just like the original center ring. Go ahead and do 30 degree angle cuts on the ends. Wow, now look at that. Think that's a keeper? Yeah, don't try to use wood like this to build your center ring. I'm getting down to the bottom of the barrel here. Okay, sorry about the wind out here, but uh, anyway, when you get your six pieces that are 24 inches long and cut your 30 degree angles on the corners, you should be able to put it together just like this. If you've done a real tight cutting job, it'll look really good. Now you notice, it pays to have really straight lumber. You can see the twist in this one and the gap underneath. A couple of the other ones are twisted too. Pretty good one should look like this. There can be various gaps in here depending, you know, because every time you make a saw cut it's not absolutely perfect, but I'm doing these to about roughly a sixteenth of an inch accuracy. So you have to get the hang of this and uh, everything will come out pretty good. So go ahead and glue this together and then add screws to each corner to pin this whole thing together as a nice solid ring. And there you have it, finished. For the next step, you're gonna need six 12 inch long blocks with 30 degree angle cuts on both ends. And then you're going to need 12 three inch long spacer blocks. This is gonna hold the center ring up off the top and make like a permanent vent. Go ahead and put your six 12 inch pieces together, glue, and go ahead and put screws. This is going to make a smaller ring that's going to go inside the roof hatch. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a 12 inch center ring within here, then we're going to come off of it to each of the flat sides using straight cut pieces. Okay, now place your 12 inch center ring inside of the 24 inch ring. Now you've got to measure to the flat sides and cut some supports for this all the way around. And this is one of the worst parts. Uh, some of this measures eight and seven eighths. Uh, some of it is just a little bit longer on mine uh, because you know the wood's kind of variable and uh, you know it may be twisted and it doesn't go together exactly perfect. So what you'll just have to do is you may want to custom cut these. 
you know, just go ahead and get it centered as best as you can. It, it's going to be pretty close, so just fight it out. Okay, so there's the hatch. And uh, what I did was uh, some of these were 8 and 7 eighths on four of the sides, and two of the sides were only off by an eighth. They were 9 inches in length. So that's actually not too bad. So something happened along the way here, and I uh, wrestled it out and split the difference. So uh, it looks really good, though, and uh, we're going to get ready to put this thing up on the roof. Okay, now we're up on top. I've hoisted this up here. Uh, and what I did was I put these blocks a little too close to the edge. See, they're right up against the bolts for the main ribs. I should have actually moved these over here so that I could put the spacer blocks a little closer to the corner. And it wouldn't hurt anything if I move these over like this. So I'm going to do the reverse on this for now because I don't want to put too many screws all close to each other in the same piece of wood so that you cause any uh, loss of strength. Now what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to put two of these spacer blocks per side like this and that's going to make this roof hatch permanently attached and three inches off so it leaves room for ventilation all the way around. So there's going to be six vents. There's many different options that you can do up here. Uh, I'm just going to show how to put on a flat hatch like this. Uh, yeah, it'll collect a little bit of water and stuff like that on the top, but it's not really too bad. I've already had it out in, in pretty heavy rains and uh, had this happen. Uh, another thing you could do too is, if you're going to put just a sheet of plastic over the top of this, if you took this center piece right here and raised it up to the top of these blocks, put the screw in at the very bottom, so in other words, offset the center ring in here by just a little bit. When you put the flat sheet of plastic on, it will actually create a bow to it. So the only place water would collect is on the center. And uh, that's one way you could do this because it, this really isn't needed for structural strength too much. Or uh, I'm going to show in another video how to actually angle these side pieces. I've got to pick out the particular angle I'm going to use so this will be like a domed hatch. So that's going to come in, a, in another video, but I'm just showing this one for the people that just want a simple hatch or might want to mount something up on top of this, you know, or anything of that sort. So let's go ahead and attach on the spacer blocks. Okay, the blocks are all installed. Two per side. Now go ahead and place your hatch. Okay, now... I screwed these in from the bottom, and then if you get outside here, you can also screw these in from the top. The 12 inch hole in the top means you can still squeeze through to get on top and put the screws in here, or even work on the roof or the plastic covering if you want to. Got a nice grab rail inside here to help you on the way up. So. All in all, this is pretty smart, so you don't have to go climbing up the roof from all these different angles. And there it is, roof hatch in place. Here's what it looks like from the outside. I don't have it screwed down yet, because I'm going to experiment and do a couple other things with that. One of the other ones I did, I actually put uh, straight bars in here and I put hinges along one end, so you can actually hinge the hatch and pop it up. Uh, there's a lot of other different things you can do. Uh, I'm gonna work on this a little bit more and uh, put up another video showing how to angle the supports in here to make it more of like a domed top and uh, get some ideas for putting in vents along the side that you can open from the inside using like a long stick with a little hook on the end of it. Uh, so you can just pop them open manually whenever you need to. So you can let this thing ventilate uh, there's also going to be some other videos coming in the future showing a exhaust fan mounted on the inside of this. So it's going to forcibly exhaust the air out of here, and that's going to be coupled with vents down in the walls that are going to be, you know, down low in the, in the center of all the walls here. So uh, you're going to be able to pull air in through the side vents and then out through the top. And here's a view from up top.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, this is going to be the last official one for the greenhouse. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, some other things too, uh, mainly going ahead and covering this mini greenhouse, and I'm going to do some uh, airflow videos and experiment with a couple different things, uh, including some passive cooling for this, using the sunlight hitting the greenhouse and pulling air in through vents in various different ways, stuff that you wouldn't really think of. Buckminster Fuller experimented with some of this and nobody ever documented it. So I'm going to attempt it with this. And uh, uh, hopefully I'll have some interesting things on video to show everybody. And anything I do on this one will also apply to the larger greenhouse. And I'd like to give special thanks to everybody from Kickstarter that made this project possible. Without you people donating, this wouldn't have happened, including all the 80 minutes plus of video that I did for this. So. I'd like to encourage you to support other projects such as this because this is how new innovation and basically good how-to information will get out there to everybody worldwide. I'm going to go ahead and roll the credits now.